This chart is crazy. It shows human population from the start of farming, 10,000 BCE, till the first civilizations around 3000 BCE. And you can see that almost all the growth is in Asia. So yeah, today we're gonna solve the puzzle for why Asia won the race to civilization. And fundamentally, Asia won in this new world of domesticating plants and animals because it had a 5,000 year head start, it had 10 times more options, and because everything spread with that east-west orientation. And there are three parts to understanding this puzzle. First, that 5,000 year head start. Second, the plants and animals in Eurasia. And then third, the plants and animals in the Americas. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Reese. Welcome to How Everything Evolved where we answer history's juiciest questions. And I'm not just gonna answer with AI slop. No, I've done a bunch of research on this. I've asked a bunch of experts. I've read a bunch of books. And so you can see here's these amazing books. Plus here's a less well-known Jared Diamond book, The Third Chimpanzee, written before Guns, Germs, and Steel. And I've made 20,000 note cards from all these books because I know how curious you are. And I want my research to match your curiosity. And in fact, I'm curious too. So let's do it. Number one, the 5,000 year head start. So Eurasia was able to domesticate all these plants and animals and have that huge increase in population because it just started earlier. So let's start with this map, which shows where farming originated all around the world. It was convergently evolved, like a bunch of people independently came up with it, which is really cool. When you look at the dates, you see like, oh, the Fertile Crescent was 11,000 years ago. That's like, you know, 9,000 BCE. And then in China, you know, the Yellow River Basin, that was 9,000 years ago, 7,000 BCE. Versus in the Americas, it was more like 4,000, 5,000 years ago. It's so like 2,000 or 3,000 BCE. And by that point, you know, 3000 BC, the people in the East, they had already spread farming everywhere and had begun to start these real civilizations. Here's a map that shows the spread of farming from the Fertile Crescent into Europe. And yeah, by the time Europe was all filled with farming, just then did the Americas start farming. Here's another way to visualize the spread of farming. And you can see this shows these people on the Near East over here where farming began and then the kind of spread over time. So the distance in kilometers by 3000 years you know, it had moved to Central Asia, to Iran, and to the Indus River Valley civilization. And what this shows is that roughly speaking, the farming moved at roughly a kilometer per year. So by 3000 years, it had moved 3000 kilometers to India. Or here's one final way to visualize it. And what this shows up here is when agriculture started. And you can see for either of these two, that the darker like orange colors are earlier and that these blue colors are much later up to like 1500 CE. And so you can see here that yeah, Eurasia started agriculture super early. And then in most of the Americas, it started really late, you know, like 1500 CE. That's not just true for plants, but also for animals. So you can see pastoralism here, it had spread all over your Eurasia, you know, by 8,000 BCE, you know, 6,000 BCE, but it took essentially until colonialism and horses for it to come to America. Now let's talk about number two, the plants and animals in Eurasia. So in addition to starting earlier, the kind of available pool of domesticatable grain and domesticatable herd animals was just better in Eurasia. Let's look at plants first and then animals. So this graph shows the different kind of cereals that existed in Eurasia versus North and South America. And you can see in Eurasia, they were amazing. We got barley, we got wheat, we got rye, we got oats, we got rice, we got millet. <laughs> what are, and even, even Africa's got some, even Africa's got sorghum. The Americas, they just had maize. And then of course, given the east-west orientation of Asia, those good grains were able to spread. And what this chart shows is the spread of these different crops. So in blue over here is wheat and barley spreading. And so you have millet spreading in orange and then rice spreading in green and then sorghum spreading in gray. And this is great because the kinds of, you know, wheat and barley that started in the Fertile Crescent, you know, 10,000 BCE, it was able to spread in the Mediterranean region all throughout Europe and also to the east into, you know, Iran. And that's because these things all kind of share the same climate. And a similar story is true with millet over here and then rice over here. Okay, now let's look at animals. And again, animals, man. <laughs> Look at Eurasia. Look at these amazing animals that they could domesticate. You had freaking cow and sheep and camels and chickens and just really, really nice things. Versus over here, you had the llama and the turkey. And part of that actually is because the Americas killed all their megafauna. And so the megafauna that existed in Africa and Eurasia were killed a little bit less because they were a little bit more used to the humans around versus once we got to North America, we killed everything. So there are no like good horses or things to domesticate. Here's a graph that shows the timeline of domestications. And so you can see there's kind of three big waves is the way I think about it. There's the dog way back in the day, 20,000 BCE. So sick, just like, oh, it's hanging out, getting some food, whatever. And then there were these ones in the Fertile Crescent. You can see they're all in the Middle East and it's like the sheep, the pig, the goat, the cow. This is like the first stage of 
domestication, mostly for meat, like eating goat and things like that, but also a little bit for like sheep's wool. And we also got the little kitty cat. And then much later, you know, let's call it 3000 BCE, around the rise of the first civilizations is when we domesticated the horse and the chicken. And then also when South America domesticated the llama. And this is why pastoralism and some of the power of these kind of horse societies that were able to control other societies, kind of like Mongols or proto-Mongols, they didn't happen at the beginning. They happened a little bit later because only at 3000 BCE do we get horses and then chariots and all those kinds of things. Here's another way to view that timeline, which shows, you know, the dog back in the day, this kind of second wave with the cow and the sheep and the goat, and then these kind of modern day with the horse and then everything else here. Yeah, we've domesticated more and more big creatures. I wanna show you this final really cool table that talks about the different kinds of domestication that we do. And what it shows is the major your five domesticated animals up here and then the minor nine domesticated animals here. And so the major five are the sheep, goat, you know, cow slash cattle, the pig and the horse, while the minor nine are like the llama and the water buffalo or whatever. And so these columns are pretty cool. This one shows the date of domestication. So this is in years before present. So like 9,000 years before present, 7,000 years BCE is when we start to domesticate all of these, you know, goat and cattle and things like that. While these ones were a little bit later, you know, closer to 1500 BCE. And then the number of breeds, you can see we have like 500 breeds of these ones, while only like 50 breeds of these minor ones. And then the number of individuals, this one's crazy. You can see there's like a billion sheep, there's a billion goat, there's a billion cattle, there's a billion pigs out in the world. There's still 60,000 horses, even though we don't use them for cities anymore, versus these ones down here. It's like, eh, there's only 10,000 llama. Okay, so we know that Eurasia was amazing. But let's understand the third piece of this puzzle. What the hell was going on in the Americas? Well, part of what was happening in the Americas was this killing of all the domesticatable species when, you know, the Clovis folks first came over. And then unfortunately for plants, they weren't doing that well either. These are potatoes. Potatoes became super important for society much later with like, you know, the Irish potato famine and things. And they're really efficient as a tuber to eat. But you can see here, they started in, you know, the Peru, Bolivia region around you know, 8,000 BCE, but they only, they stayed here for the whole time. And the reason for that is because it was too hard to get them out of kind of that mountainous region, too hard to get them. I mean, the Amazon is to your east, to the north is the Panama Canal. And so this tuber, the potato, which was so great, wasn't able to spread as well until after colonization when it spread all around the world. And there's a similar story with maize or corn, where you can see it started in Mesoamerica and, you know, Mexico around 7,000 BCE. And then it took a while. You see it like by the time it got up here, this was 2,500 BCE. So it took so long for it to go north. And it also took a surprising amount of time to go south. You know, 5,000 BCE is when it first got down here. You know, so corn kind of dominates the world these days but it took a long time for it to spread initially, in many ways because of this north-south orientation. Okay, so that's why Asia won. Asia won because it had a 5,000 year start, 10 times more options, and spread on that east-west axis. And what that meant is the population of Asia rose so much more quickly than everywhere else. And it did that because it started to eat more and more of those cereals. This graph shows that same population chart, but it shows where those calories come from. And so you can see the beginning, people were mostly eating, you know, plants and some meat, but then by here, it's like everybody's eating cereal, you know, rice, wheat, Lucky Charms. You can also see that here, which is that same chart, but as a percentage. So what this shows is that at the beginning, we ate a bunch of plants and meat, you know, megafauna and things like that. And then by 3000 BCE, it was like, nah, we ate a ton of cereals, we ate a ton of rice, and we were just starting to do milk. And this is crucial because when we get to the next part in the series, we'll show how, oh man, 3000 BCE, all of those places that had all this farming for so long, they start to explode into the civilizations that we know today. That those six cradles of civilization, a lot of them were in Eurasia. Thanks as always for listening. If you have any questions or feedback, or if you think I look like Johnny Sims, <laughs> Put it in the comments down below. And if you're trying to understand how we got here, how farming first started, check out this video here. Or if you wanna stay with us on the journey to know what's gonna happen with those new civilizations and why did the first city start? Subscribe here for more. Thanks.